What you're about to hear will both surprise and outrage you. It's the true story of Europe. It's the story the politicians don't want you to hear because it shows how they've deceived us and betrayed our nation. Only in 1994 did Chancellor Kohl's foreign policy spokesman, speaking on behalf of the ruling party of Europe's dominant nation, Germany, clearly reveal the true plan. The plan is to create a federal European superstate. Into it will be merged up to 25 ancient European nations, including our own. This new country called Europe will have one parliament, one government, one court of justice, one currency, one flag, and one anthem. That has been the plan all along. But those who favoured it knew the people of Europe would never accept it. They would never willingly surrender their freedoms to become just a province in a vast European superstate. So what did the politicians do? They conspired to keep the truth from the people. Take us. When we entered Europe, we were led to believe it was just a common market of independent nations trading with one another. Our government even reassured us with an official document known as a white paper. It gave us a clear undertaking. There would be no erosion of essential national sovereignty. And Edward Heath, the Conservative Prime Minister whose government took us into Europe, later hammered home the point when he said, there are some in this country who fear that in going into Europe, we shall in some way sacrifice independence and sovereignty. These fears, I need hardly say, are completely unjustified. In fact, they were completely justified. Mr. Heath knew it, and here's the proof. Well before these reassuring statements were made, Mr. Heath received this letter from Britain's then Lord Chancellor, the head of our judiciary. It spelled out in black and white that the surrenders of sovereignty are serious ones and ought to be brought out in the open now. But Mr. Heath and his colleagues chose not to bring these vital facts out in the open. Instead, they hid them from the British public, and the politicians continue to do so. Now, in 1997, we can look back and see how the grand plan of the Eurocrats is taking shape, and just how far the politicians have already gone in surrendering our liberty. But first, let's remind ourselves what the fundamental rights of an independent nation are. The power to pass laws in our own land. The power to run our economy, to create jobs and security for our people. The power to decide foreign policy. The power to organize our own national security. And the power to control our own borders. Without these fundamental rights, we're not a nation but merely a province. And the terrible truth is that our politicians have already given away the first two of these rights. Our own judges have confirmed that the treaty is the supreme law of this country, taking precedence over acts of parliament. Laws made by the European Commission are now the laws of this land. And how they love making them. In 1994 alone, they imposed over 6,700 diktats, an average of 129 new laws every week that we must obey. And what about the power to run our own economy? That went when John Major signed the first two stages of economic and monetary union. So whether we join the single currency or not, we must now run our economy, not for our benefit, but for Europe as a whole. And as if this wasn't bad enough, the European institutions are now working away to remove our last remaining rights as an independent nation. As usual, the politicians are putting up a smokescreen to deceive us, this time in the shape of a referendum on the single currency. But whether we join it or not, it will make little difference. It won't stop the terrible destruction of our fishing industry. It won't stop the tide of new regulations that are crippling our small businesses. It won't stop VAT going on books, travel, children's clothes, and even houses. It won't remove the threat of us having to subsidize European pensioners whose governments haven't put aside enough money to pay them. It won't stop the recent German and French threats to raise our taxes to their levels. And it won't stop the unelected bureaucrats of Brussels telling us how to run our lives, our businesses, and indeed our country. 
So the phony single currency referendum that both John Major and Tony Blair have promised us is nothing more than a fob off. Its sole purpose is to fool you into imagining that you have a say in Europe. But perhaps the most sinister development of all is the way the politicians have postponed the really important questions about our remaining freedoms until after the general election. This cunning move allows them to continue deceiving us with empty promises. Our next general election may not be for another five years. By then, it will be too late. This is the chilling promise from Germany's Chancellor Kohl. Within two years, we will make the process of integration irreversible. The referendum party was formed for one and only one reason, to fight for the right of the British people to decide whether they wanted to be governed by Westminster or Brussels. Now, we in the referendum party, we're not politicians. We don't want to be politicians. What unites us is the belief that in the true spirit of democracy, we must let the people of Britain decide the future of Britain. And as soon as a full and fair referendum has been held, we'll resign. That's written into our constitution. Now, some might ask, why support a single issue party? But when you think about it, this is the only issue which counts. Every other issue flows from it. And until it's resolved, the vital election promises made by the politicians will be empty promises, because the power to deliver them will have gone to Brussels. British politicians in future will have really be rubber stamping the orders coming from Brussels. And that is not what I understand by democracy. The total number of votes cast for us will send a message to the politicians. We want a referendum on Europe. And you, the politicians, do not have the right to surrender the nation's independence. Only the people can make such a decision. That is why every single vote is vital to our future as a nation. My roots are here, I live here, the people here are my people, I feel part of it. And I believe we've been betrayed by the Eurocrats, the bureaucrats and our politicians. It's now time for us to have our say. The grassroots are here, I'm part of the grassroots. When we've had our say, then I can get back to the land doing the things I want to. But until then, we have to fight for democracy coming back to the people.